Dhritarashtra must have been extremely happy saying we got it. That didn't work. We tried psychological warfare. Psychological warfare worked. You implanted correctly. And Sanjay is reporting of all. So Dhritarashtra must be saying, uh -huh, all that what you said, what I said, you have reported to him correctly and now you see him. With their intellect overpowered by greed, Sanjaya told this, the Kauravas are greedy. They can't understand, but you guys are noble. You should consider. They can't change. You think you can do anything, they will not. So, exactly. With their intellect overpowered by greed, they do not see. Na pashyanti dosham. They do not see the evils what a war can create. Because it is their greed which has covered their eyes. They can't see what will be the effect of this war. They can't see. Because they have greed. But you people are not like that. So Arjuna is saying, they are greedy. Therefore, they can't see what war can do. War can do is... Uh, it can destroy families and the sin of harming friends. Still, why can't we decide to withdraw from this sinful action? Yadapi, still, they can't. But why can't we? They can't see all this. But why can't we decide to withdraw from this sinful action? Now, there is something interesting. All the while Arjuna is talking, Krishna never opened his mouth. You must understand this clearly. Arjuna is building his case. Argument after argument, reason after reason. From grip gone, from my hand, my head is spinning, bad omens, greed, Three worlds I don't want. Let them live. They are my own people. Each powerful argument. And now the argument right now trending is families will be destroyed. Family values will go. This will happen. Exactly. And all the while Krishna is still silent. Now, silence has a power. Not always. When you have to voice, you have to voice. That time you be silent, that is wrong. But there are places when you are silent, silence has a greater power. Arjuna is not able to understand. This man, my well-wisher, my mentor, my friend, does he agree to what I say? Somewhere, is he nodding his head at least, saying, Ha, ah, Arjuna, right. Is he saying something like that? Does he acknowledge my thought process? Or what does he mean? He's just quiet. Krishna never opened his mouth and he stayed quiet. Arjuna could not understand, so vehemently he tries to put his case. So he says, oh Krishna, because of uh, this greed, etc., they have taken to unrighteousness. If we also follow, we will be destroying Kula Dharma, family traditions, family values, family way of life, all that will go. 100% argument accepted if Duryodhana said it. Arjuna saying it. That's exactly what they were doing. Destroy families, try to kill them, poison them, everything. Send them on a yatra and burn their whole house thinking they'll die there, wax palace. Poison Bhima and push him into water and drown him to death. Your own family. This is how you behave. And to that extent that the daughter-in-law of the house was brought to the middle of the palace to be stripped. What values of the family are you talking? All destroyed. And these people are on top. Yatha Raja Tata Praja. 
If this is what the man on power on top is doing, people are going to follow it down. So the values what he's talking is already gone, not there. That needs to be saved. To save that, you can't keep these people on top. They will destroy it further. What Arjuna said is important as family values and family uh, traditions, etc. We need to keep. But not on the case saying, therefore, let us not take any, uh, let's not fight the war is not the right argument. But the point said, family traditions are important, they need to be preserved, is, is a very valid point. Now, how well are we preserving our family traditions, family values? How well are we preparing? Uh, how well are we preserving? There is no Duryodhana. There is no war. We are there in comfort. How well are we preserving? One question for you to think. The things which your mother practiced as traditional values, how much of it you are practicing? 50% of what your mother practiced, what your father practiced as traditional values, how much of it are you practicing? So whatever you saw your parents practicing, how much of it are you practicing? Oh, that was too elaborate. Too much. I have picked up what I consider as the essential. Your wisdom. What you consider, that which has come down the ages all the while, so many people have practiced it, but you feel they are not required, they are redundant. The wisdom in you says, what is the essential? I'll pick it up. So let us say you picked up 20% of what your parents practiced. So this 20% is what your child is going to watch. Your 20% is 100% for the child. 100% for the child, because that's all she sees. And your child has to be an improvement upon you. If you have taken only 20% and which you thought is essential, what do you think the next generation will do? 5%. So grandfather to grandson, 95% lost. Family traditions we preserve. Where are we? In spirit, do we preserve? No. External rituals which keep certain things intact together, there do we preserve? No. Where are we preserving? We have a responsibility. That which was handed over over ages, it is a responsibility we preserve. If we don't preserve, this is exactly what Arjuna is warning, saying it will all be destroyed and nothing would remain, everything would go down, continuing. Sankaro narakayaiva, Sankaro narakayaiva, Kulaknanam kulasyacha, Kulaknanam kulasyacha, Patanti pitaro hesha, Patanti pitaro hesha, Lupta pindo da gakriya, Lupta pindo da gakriya, Dosai redai kulaknanam, 
Indeed, because of not following these values, uh, there could be a different kind of cross-breedings, clash of cultural values, etc. All this can create a very different kind of chaotic atmosphere. Krishna maintained the silence still, did not say anything. Because one argument after another, put another line, and he was silent. So Arjuna makes one more attempt. If the family traditions, etc., values, dharma, are lost, people may not even offer to their forefathers, ancestors, shraddha, etc., various ceremonies which are practiced, they will drop all this. They will also be affected. Look at the argument. Not just here. The forefathers, the people the, in the world of means who are living, they will also be affected. Because all this will go. All this will be destroyed. He thought at this level, ancestors, you know, the forefathers, they will also suffer. Arjuna expected at that time, Krishna will say something. Krishna kept silent. Oh Krishna, we have heard from the scriptures, Anushushruma. Till now what he said was there, Krishna was quiet now. Arjuna is quoting Shruti, Shastra support. Okay, it's not I said it. These are the holy books talking about it. What are you saying? So he says, Oh Krishna, this we have heard from scriptures that living in hell is inevitable. Where do you think Arjuna is right now? Living in hell is inevitable. If you don't practice all these things, we will land up into hell that is inevitable. Correct. Living a life like living in hell, suffering continuously, is inevitable if we don't practice dharma. And exactly that's what was happened. There was no dharma in Hastinapur. Dharma lost, everybody became miserable. So he says, thus we have heard from the books, the holy books talk, that if these things are not maintained and kept, we will end up into, we will land up into hell. He tried, there also Krishna was silent, and we go into the last three verses. Yeah. <laughs> Aho Badamahat Papam Kartum Yavasita Vayam Kartum Yavasita Vayam Yadraj Yasukalo Bena Yadraj Yasukalo Bena Hantum Swajana Mudyata Hantum Swajana Mudyata Yadimama Pradikaram 
Arjuna says here in the concluding verses, he says, Alas, we have taken to this to perform kartum, this terrible action for our own kingdom, greed for pleasure and power. Look at the confusion. We have taken to fight and destroy the Kauravas for what? For power and kingdom, pleasure. Arjuna, Yudhishthir, all did not come there for power and pleasure. He says, we have decided to, you know, like we have taken up to perform, to kill these people for this sake, due to greed for pleasure and kingdom, we are prepared to kill our own people. Then he says, even if armed Kauravas would kill me, now he is making the point, the final point very clear. I will drop my weapons. The armed Pandavas can go ahead and kill me. I will not even defend. So Arjuna who suddenly felt very sympathetic, very compassionate, wanted to move out of the terrible situation in which he landed, as a man of compassion, dropped his arms. You can attack me and kill me. I will let it all go. Saying this, he dropped his bow and arrow and sat down. At the Kaurava side, Duryodhana and others must have been very happy. Arjuna got psyched. And Dhritarashtra must have said, Wow! The final attempt worked without a war. We got the kingdom back without all this. Arjuna sat down. So Sanjaya says that, having spoken thus in the battlefield, Arjuna with grief-stricken heart dropped his bow and arrow and sat at the edge of the chariot saying, that is it. It's finished. Now no more. The story ends here. That's what Arjuna said. Now, this was just a preparation. Actual Gita begins from second chapter. Second chapter of the Gita is a very important chapter. This was just like stories, warriors, Arjuna's disease, Arjuna had some problems mentally, and then he was started, started placing his arguments and things like that. But uh, actual knowledge is from second chapter. Second chapter is such a complete chapter. The themes discussed in the second chapter of the Gita are the expansion for rest of the Gita. Whatever is discussed in the second chapter was elaborately discussed in the following chapters, third to seventeen. Eighteenth again is a kind of a summary. So second chapter is one of the most important chapters. The verses of the second chapter are life transforming. Yesterday we discussed Achyuta, where Krishna stayed, not falling down. 
how to stay there, how to remain, is the theme. It discusses every aspect. It talks about the temporary nature of the world. It talks about death. It talks about immortal self. It talks about the illusory perception. And towards the end of the second chapter, Krishna gives, what are the characteristics of a person who has understood this truth? How would that person respond to the world? How would he behave in this world? Those characteristics of the wise man are very important because we attempting to practice would help us to elevate. Stata Pragna Lakshana. Attempting, when we start attempting to practice that, it will definitely elevate us. So second chapter is a very important chapter. And the teacher who is going to take this is Swami Ramakrishnananda. Ramakrishnananda is a very talented Acharya, well rooted in Sanskrit. He has taken up a beautiful way of simplifying Sanskrit teaching. And I tell you, he will make you weep by laughing. <laughs> 